you know, I had a program that we use. Ours was passed last night. That was the first thing on the agenda. That took, that took two seconds. Right now, when you were producing the agenda, sent it out. We didn't print. We didn't print. Yeah. Printing is passe. What, uh, what level do we want? And that's something that still a little bit hard to get used to. I print the agenda. I, mean, I like to work and I have a hard copy of the agenda, but then all the staff members. This is nice in here. Nice print. I know how to get my voice. Yeah. Today I took a day off just to come. Hey, that's okay. That was last year's leadership. Right now, I used to represent the leadership class of 2013. Yeah. 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 Now I represent. You're sitting in my chair. Hey, you. You're no, I'm. In my chair. I'm sitting. She's sitting. You're sitting in my chair. <laughs> Guess I'm as high as I can get. I want to go higher. Nope. I hired to be moved to Colorado. <sighs> no, there's no one there. No, there's no one there. This is so far away. What looks slimmer? Yes. Yeah. Well, I was thinking 10. I would get out of afterwards. I'm thinking 10. Where is the cupcakes? Yeah, I didn't know. Food? I didn't get it. That's what happens when you come in the back way. I didn't have lunch. They're over in the corner. Oh, all right. If you hurry. You know, it's yeah. your house. You might as well. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Run, run. <laughs> um, right now, I have, just as I say, a fairly. I had 300. Talk me into it. I had. Just don't call me Dora. <laughs> from maybe 75,000. I'm good, how are you? Really, uh, probably Jerry. Could you get the Almond and Valley? Don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I, at the, uh, I remember doing that. I was at the Almond and Valley Library. Paul Fong represents my assembly. Yeah, currently. Yeah. I think we, uh, and Paul's running for city council. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it'll be, we'll speak here, see what happens. So. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting of the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency Governing Board meeting um, to order. I have a roll call, please. Chair Tucker? Here. Board members Constantine? Here. Tate? Here. Wasserman? Here. Simidian? Here. Thomas? Here. At this time, I'd like to see if there are any public comments. So, do we have anyone in the public who would like to come forward and speak? Are we getting comment cards? No. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't see any. Moving on to item number one. Approve fiscal year 2014-2015 Santa Clara Valley Habitat budget. And um, I would, is there a staff report? Very briefly, the um, budget it, with very minor, very small changes. Um, was the subject of a workshop for, for the implementation board in March. Uh, public advisory committee and reviewed it in May. The implementation board reviewed it in May and recommended adoption of the budget. The, uh, there were sm two small adjustments. One is in the executive officer uh, total expenditure to reflect the contract with uh, Edmund Sullivan um, and also a uh, $10,000 for a contract with uh, my firm, Land Use Planning Services, for transition uh, ser uh, services assistance in July. And Ed, and Ed and I have been talking about how to try to best make use of the time, and we feel we will, we can fill that time and, and probably go beyond it, but we won't try to go beyond it. Uh, but there will be a variety of services that I can provide Ed both in the office as well as in meetings and substantive meetings and meet and greet and a lot of other things. Uh, there's also some significant um, <laughs> file sorting that needs to occur uh, from actually from the plan development. I think I may be the last, just about the last one standing to, <laughs> to take that on. Um, and then we modified very slightly the uh, cost center on plan preparation and, and endowment. There actually are some separate, some different percentages that apply to wetland fees versus the land cover fees. And when we plugged in those 
very minor hundreds of a percent uh, changes, we ended up with a few with a slightly different dollar amount. Um, I just want to note that, um, as I've noted in the past, the the budget includes objectives. Um, I come from a school of budgeting that stresses um, the the importance of using the the budget as a planning document for organizations and. Um, from the county standpoint, you may, that may be referred to as the Emily Harrison School of Budgeting uh, from all the years that Emily and I worked together in Palo Alto. Uh, so the, the budget, the objectives are there that really set out a, a work direction for the agency. Um, and that is being coordinated with Ed, it's being coordinated with consultants, it's being coordinated with the management team. Um, and we will have a 2013-14 reconciliation of the budget, and I, I would expect that to come forward in, in August, which, with, which will have the final totals through the end of the budget year. Obviously, we don't have that yet. Uh, and then uh, unspent 2013-14 uh, revenues are soon to be carried forward into the current year. Um, with that, um, I will open it for any questions you have, and the recommendation clearly is to adopt the budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ken. Um, Ken, on, on the contract for you, my understanding, July 7th and 8th, and then Monday through Friday for the 14th, 21st, and 20th. So there's, there's 17 days. 17 days, which works out at 80% of a month. So I took 80% of the current conversation. I understand the proration that you did. And I just want to make sure with that time in the contract, that's when you come back from your vacation, and you'll be available for those basically 40 hours, 40 hours. Mm -hmm. And yes. Ed will be available as well, your schedules, so that you guys can side by side and then hand off successfully? Exactly. And we, we are right now um, populating uh, Ed's schedule for July and August with a focus on meeting with, with the partner agencies, the staffs, meeting with the wildlife agencies, meeting meetings focused on some of the major issues and background, meetings with ICF, et cetera, uh, as well as a variety of uh, opportunities to get out into the community. Good. Some meet, I, meet, meet and greet, some site visits. I, I can to tell you it's, it's very important for me, Madam Chair, if, if I may. Um, it's very important for me with your valuable time that your time spent with Ed is planned out each day and, and filled so that it doesn't end July 31st, whatever that last Friday is, mm -hmm. in July, and you haven't yet met with this organization or this group or this mm -hmm. individual or, or something. Right. The, uh, and Ken, nothing yeah. at all to do with you. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to minimize our costs oh, yeah. going, going forward. And that's why I looked when I was adding up the days, the 17 days, and I just wanted to make sure with you that that was sufficient amount of time for the two of you. And, and with proper scheduling, I, I'm hoping you can accomplish everything that you desire to, uh, to accomplish. Uh, Chairman Wasserman, I, I'm going to caution that you really probably ought to be speaking to Mr. Schreiber, uh, or speaking to someone else about the conversation with Mr. Schreiber about his own contract. Um, ah. Okay, please. Okay. So, if, so give the instructions or directions, anything that you have regarding that, that future agreement to whoever the agency's negotiator will be at that point but it really should not be a topic of discussion. We're really talking about the budget here, and, and there is an issue with uh, Understood. this. Thank you. Understood. Um, Let me provide the assurance that, one, we will do that, and second is that Ed will have my email, my phone number, and my commitment to this agency and this plan does not end on August the 1st. So if there are times, and Ed and I have talked about this, that if there are times he needs advice, he needs background, uh, he can give me a call in the future and I'll be very glad to, to assist. Thank you, and Madam. And that will not be with, for any compensation. And Madam, thank you, and I, I appreciate that. And Madam Chair, per uh, Council's recommendation, mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution and approve the fiscal budget, um, and also direction through this committee um, that our executive director I think that's the best way to do it, and Vera, please, through the chair, Vera, please correct me if I'm mistaken, that our executive director um, works with Ken as soon as possible, um, even though he's not on the clock, I don't believe, until July 7th, mm -hmm. um, that he works, 
I guess through you. It's, if somebody can contact him, I don't know quite what the process is, contact the executive director. In the meantime, I'll ask that our current executive director um, create a schedule. Yes. And I, I just want to make sure when Ed gets here July 7th and the clock started with Ken, <clears throat> that they've got meetings set up and, and getting everything done that can possibly be done that month of July. Because I'm, I'm waiting. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. That would be my motion. Thank you. That would be my motion. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Questions? Mayor Tate? No. Nope. Good to go. Everyone? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Zero. Thank you. On to item two, delegation of authority to take various actions related to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Regional G General Permit to the Implementation Board. Thank you. The, uh, the request, which is similar to the actions that were taken regarding land in lieu of fees and participating special entity procedures, is for the governing board to refer the specifics to be reviewed by and uh, approved by the implementation board uh, under the joint powers authority agreement uh, that needs to occur to to essentially transfer that responsibility to the implementation board um, and then we will be coming back i use the the grand we even if i'm not going to be around uh, we will be coming back to the implementation board with both policies and then recommendations on fees and charges okay so this is the referral to the implementation board. That's that's what you're doing. So I do have a question. During um, the last several years, during the makeup of the HEP, how did we envision it then? Is this a, per our goals of, of how we were going to handle this? The, reg the regional general, well, in terms of the Joint Powers Authority, uh, power, the, the authority is reserved by the governing board with, with some identified exceptions uh, that are implementation board, and then anything else that is referred to the implementation board. So this, again, is similar to a land in lieu of fees, which wasn't called out as an implementation board responsibility, but certainly seemed to be the most appropriate way of, of handling that. Um, so the, 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 the precedent is to try to refer these policy and procedural issues to the implementation board. Uh, Identification of fees and charges remains a governing board responsibility, but implementation board would make a recommendation on that. Right. Uh, as far as the habitat plan itself, um, the introduction of the issue of coordination and linking the habitat plan to uh, Army Corps of Engineers permits, as well as eventually, hopefully, the Regional Water Quality Control Board permits, um, is not specifically in any great detail called out in the plan other than it was added in the errata sheet and it and the issue came up uh, sort of front and center with the city of san jose's review and that led to the adding of some wording about carrying out this type of regional general permit coordination uh, with the the corps of engineers and that that the authority is there in in terms of of the the errata which is part of the approved plan okay i just wanted to make sure we were consistent with what we said we were going to do and we're carrying out yes the, the one Neither of the boards have really looked at the development of the permit, the regional general permit, or the application. If you had the plan to look at before it was adopted, and you knew how that would be implemented because you had the plan in front of you. This is a little bit different in that respect, and that's one of the reasons why the resolution reads the way that it does. It's a teeny bit different than the ones that you've done before in that we're asking the implementation board in, in section one of the resolution on, on the second page to, that, to take discretionary action, to really take a look at the permit conditions, to have staff do that, recommend approval or disapproval to them, um, or acceptance, I should say, and use to them, to ensure that the agency feels that it can administer and comply with the conditions of the permit. Excuse me, excuse excuse me Madam Chair and Vera, I'm getting signals from the back. Do you have a microphone? I do not. If you can share that you're not being picked up in the back. Thank you. Thank you. I think we know what Morgan Hill needs for Christmas now is another microphone. <laughs> really. But what I was going to say is um, this is slightly different than the land and lieu and PSE delegations that you did for participating special entities in that there the plan had specified in, in relative detail 
some of what would be required in both of those situations. Here with the regional general permit, it was really intended to create sort of a one-stop shop for development and for projects, and it was, a wi it was on the wish list, and it's contemplated in the plan, but it's not set out in the same amount of detail. Um, the application was done uh, to the Army Corps of Engineers prior to this organization uh, being created. And because of timing, we, we needed to do that. And so the section one in the resolution that you're being asked to approve says that the whole thing comes back to you, meaning the implementation board, if you delegate it to them, to see if you feel that you can actually carry out the duties of that permit and administer it appropriately. And someone needs to take a look at that rather than just signing on the dotted line. So staff needs, to, whoever your staff is, needs to take a look at that and make a recommendation to you about whether to move forward with the permit or, or ask for changes or so if there's something that you don't like about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Thank you. I had uh, one for Mayor Tate, if I may, through the chair. Is this meeting televised? Is this meeting recorded? Do you know? Uh, Larry, <laughs> are you the recording? The meeting is recorded and it is posted on YouTube. Okay, I would okay. ask the chair just to arrange that this meeting gets to Ed. Okay. Our, yes. our incoming yes. executive director, yeah, just so yes. he can hear some of the stuff that, that's being said that's all public. Okay. Um, if you please do that, that direction there. And um, question I had before making a motion, Madam Chair, um, twice in these brief three or four pages, it's referenced under certain specified conditions, both on page one and page two of the ordinance, the resolution. And through you, if I may ask of our executive director what those specified conditions are. I can show you exactly where they are, Ken, if you don't happen to. No, the chair just noted the uh, last section of number one on page two of the resolution, uh, which talks about um, the uh, approval process. Um, Issuing to issue permits, etc., um, such as the agency is able to administer and comply. What we want, uh, the intent is, and we confirmed with uh, Corps of Engineers staff on Tuesday of this week, that uh, we will have, they will provide us with a draft regional general permit. And what we want to make sure uh, is that it is, it really addresses the, the needs of the partners, the needs of the, it's consistent with the habitat plan, and that the administration of that um, is clearly understood in terms of procedures as well as uh, fees, charges, etc. Um, so it's, those are the, the specified conditions. It'll be what's in the permit as well as how the permit is, is implemented. And again, consistent with the idea of streamlining the review process for, for uh, both public and private sector applicants. So if I may, through the chair. So those specific conditions that are, are referenced again in the resolution and on the first page of the staff report are really yet as undefined as, as far as that goes. And isn't this a big aha moment, this, <laughs> this resolution here that, I mean, since I've been here and involved with the Powell River Valley water flood, there's never been anything positive about the U.S. Army Corps <laughs> relationship. Don't, don't edit me out there. The U.S. The US Army Corps relationship and what I've seen here, especially in the last year, is now I'll, now I'll smooth the whole thing out. Yeah. Um, what he meant to say was. Is, yes, thank you. <laughs> is a willingness on their part to collaborate with the other partners, including what it's all fish and wildlife now or fish and game? Fish and wildlife? It is United States Fish and Wildlife Service and it's the State Department of Fish and Wildlife. Okay, I, 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 I thank the U.S. Army Corps. I just thought this was a much bigger to do. This is. <laughs> this, this is a big thing. This is mm -hmm. a big thing. Yeah. Is. No, th th this is. There is a many decade history yes. of difficulty in dealing with the Corps of Engineers on specific projects. And the Corps of Engineers, I think at the Washington level, had a uh, change of heart a year and a half ago or so, yes. and the direction came down from General somebody or another 
down the line and the lieutenant colonel in San Francisco is, is on the receiving end of the order chain and the order essentially was or the direction was to for the Corps of Engineers to find ways to cooperate in linking its permitting process with uh, regional watershed type plans such as habitat plans and etc. So this is a big deal. This well, is a I'll deal that ahead. would not have been possible I would say two and a half years ago. There was no clear Thank direction you. I, to get I it. I thought it was a big deal too. Madam Chair, I'll yes. make the motion to adopt a resolution delegating to the Implementation Board the authority to do as is described in A and B below. Thank you. Second. That's it. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, thank you very much <laughs> to the Corps of Engineers. Yes. Yay. The wonderful Corps of Engineers. <laughs> no, this is actually a big, big win for us. Okay, on to item three, Santa Clara Valley Habitat Let Agency. me uh, just introduce Lizanne Reynolds, who prepared the staff report. Lizanne is, uh, is with the County Council's office, uh, and uh, this is, is her item, so I will move over and, and let Lizanne. Okay. Well, for the record, Ken doesn't need to move over, but I do because oh, I have okay. conflict with this item. Thank you. <laughs> so this is a request from the City of San Jose City Attorney's Office to grant a waiver of a conflict of interest for them. Uh, you know, as you know, Vera has been representing the Habitat Agency in various respects and uh, she would like to be able to, and the, her office would like her to be able to represent the city with respect to habitat agency related matters. That might include, uh, you know, as you know, most, most private development projects and even city projects, the, the city uh, as a local partner and permittee will decide, you know, what kind of mitigation is required, how many fees are required. So there's not that much interaction between the local partners and the habitat agency, but there are circumstances under which that could occur. For example, uh, if there's a land uh, in lieu of fee dedication, there, there, you know, that would involve the Habitat Agency figuring out you know, what the terms of that arrangement would be. So uh, this waiver of conflict of interest does allow anybody in the city attorney's office to, including Vera, to work on uh, anything related to the Habitat Agency except for uh, Vera and anybody else in the office who's worked on the YCS litigation matter, uh, the ethical wall would have to remain in place. And that's because there is a potential conflict of interest between the city of San Jose on that issue and the Habitat Agency and the other local partners. We're currently involved in settlement discussions and I don't wanna go into that because it's obviously confidential, but um, that ethical wall would remain in place and the city attorney's office is fine with that. So um, that, Exclusion only applies to Vera, as I stated, and any paralegals or other staff who may have worked on the YCS matter for the Habitat Agency. Um, but otherwise, you know, anybody in the city attorney's office, including Vera, could work on any Habitat Agency related matter uh, if you agree to this waiver. I don't have a question. I'm prepared to, to make a motion. Um, um, I have a question. Okay. Oh. I just, because I'm not an attorney, okay. Um, is this standard procedure for this type of thing? I don't think it's unusual. I, you certainly have the discretion to agree or not agree to the waiver uh, of the conflict. You know, I, I do think it's, you know, you do, you do have a local partner providing you a council services. So, uh, you know, you have to take that into consideration whether, it, you know, you think that it's fair or appropriate to say that the whole city attorney's office is barred from representing the city with respect to any matter that's habitat agency related. Uh, you know, the, I mean, the vast majority of things that probably everything, uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, that Vera has worked on uh, in her capacity as uh, agency counsel are public items, adoptions of, you know, fee adoptions, adoption of other things that you've done in public agendas. So. Um, there isn't much, you know, I, you know, obviously she has given you some confidential legal advice as well. Um, the question is what the city attorney's office at this point doesn't see any actual or even potential conflict between the work that Vera has done for the agency and, and what 
uh, the city attorney's office might be doing for the city in the future. And if they do, if there is an actual conflict that ar arises that they, become, they became aware of, they would notify the Habitat Agency about that and you could deal with that at that time. But right now they are representing that they don't see any actual or potential conflicts. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clear, clarify. So I have a motion by, oh, yes. I just want to make sure I'm following all the moving parts here. So up till now, the city attorney's office has had a firewall and they, other than our council, the folks in the city attorney's office have not been engaged in or part of uh, the work of this habitat agency or had access to there's been a firewall I believe the firewall is just with respect to YCS but if that's if that's that's my understanding if that's not true um, you might you, you could ask Vera that question I mean she she would be answering not in her capacity of advising you but just you know, factually answering I have not advised the city on anything having to do with the Habitat Agency work with the exception of as Habitat Agency Council. If someone asks me a question from any agency, I will respond to it as Habitat Ag Agency Council, but I have not represented the City of San Jose with regard to Habitat Agency work for the 14 months that I have been doing this. But I think the question was whether anybody else in the City Attorney's Office has done Habitat Agency no. related. Okay. Well, not, not for the agency. But for, for the, the city, city, but not okay. for the agency. And then if we take the action which is um, contained in our packets as the recommended action, which I believe is either the subject of our motion or about to be the subject of the motion, um, that, that, that conflict um, that would exist going forward for Ms. Todorov is no longer in place. Is that what happens? We, we've we said that that conflict does not exist. It, well, the city is saying that they don't see an actual or potential conflict at this time, but they, to cover their bases, they want a conflict waiver. Um, and as I said, the, the, the YCS matter where we do see a potential or even possibly actual conflict, she would continue to be walled off. So it's it's somewhat, uh, as originally proposed, uh, the city was uh, not pro was proposing to waive the conflict with respect to the YCS matter as well, but uh, we did not feel the county council's office did not feel that that was appropriate given the the potential or even actual conflict there. Okay, thank you. That's um, helpful and clarifying for me at least. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. We have a Madam motion. Chair. Thank yes. you. Just. Um, Based on the um, analysis by Lizanne Reynolds, our agency special counsel, I'll make the motion to approve the recommended actions as identified in bullets one and two. Uh, just one question, if I may, through the chair from Ms. Reynolds. I've heard ethical wall, firewall, conflicts wall. All three are the same? Yes. I mean, we may be using yes. the words wrong, but they were all intended to be the same. Yeah, it was historically referred to as a Chinese wall, but for you know Chinese wall. Yeah, but we're, we've dispensed <laughs> with that. We've dispensed with that for uh, very, for obvious reasons, and so the new terminology is a little un inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when we're talking about <laughs> same these thing, because one wall is referred to in the report, one wall said one wall. I just want to make sure that I fully understand. I'm not an attorney. And I just wanted to fully understand. I understand your recommendation here. So that would be my motion. Okay. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Passes. So we are now down to item four, planning calendar. Thank you. This is a, um, a document you have not seen before. Uh, but you will be seeing it in the future. Uh, the, uh, what I still refer to as the management team, the co permittees, senior staff that continues to meet most Friday mornings, um, routinely reviews what items are coming up on future agendas. And so what we have done is provided, and thanks to Debbie Cobble for uh, actually taking this and turning it into a, a from, my, from my standpoint, a good readable document, is to plug in all of the regular meetings for the next year 
and what the thinking right now is in terms of likely agenda items. And uh, there may well be special meetings, and there certainly will be changes on agenda items over the course of the year. But this gives you a document that both can address the uh, uh, placement of meetings on schedules, which we strongly encourage folks to, to look ahead in their calendars and get these dates put onto, onto schedules, um, and then uh, provide an indication of what may be coming. There may be questions people have of, what, of, of a particular item, uh, whatever, but it's, it's primarily to give everybody a, a, a good understanding of where the agency, the items the agency will be taking up over the course of the next year. Okay, I actually have... There's no, uh, no action recommended. It's no action recommended, thank you. Oh, then please recommend. put it on your schedules. <laughs> are all the meetings at 3 o'clock? The, the board meetings are at 3 o'clock. The public advisory committee meetings are at 6. So I do have a question then. In our organization, Canon, uh, and in future ed, who exactly is reviewing this before we posted and we plan to do it. It's being, re being reviewed by the executive officer and reviewed by other members of the co-permittee senior staff. It, it is really a joint effort of thinking ahead. So like yeah. a the TAC force, so to speak. Right. The, 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 during plan development, there was a uh, group of staff that met on a very regular basis called the management, the management team. team. I still call I'm, it the management okay. team. But it's, a senior, it's senior staff from the, from the six co-permittee co agencies, plus the Habitat agency now, plus I, generally ICF is involved and sometimes other consultants. And they have an agenda, and we've been meeting probably three Fridays out of every month uh, with packed agendas of things that uh, need to be worked on, any number of which will find their way to to your agendas. So I, I have a pro proposal that I would like the management team to, to consider, and I'm not sure if this is the time to bring it up, but uh, in many of the other committees and regional committees that I'm on, there's a, an item on the agenda for the public advisory committee to do a report, and I would like to add that, or bring it up to be discussed to add that we have that as part of the agenda, that the chair of the public advisory committee give us a report of their meetings and. I mean, I do that at, I, at the I, Caltrain meeting. I do that at pretty much a lot of the meetings I'm involved in. I, th I think that is, one, a good idea. Second is one of the tasks of the Public Advisory Committee Chair is to attend, as Mr. Glimes is attending today, yeah, to attend board meetings and to um, create a spot to provide uh, any feedback information as appropriate on agenda items, I think would be perfectly fine. It would be very good to do. Okay. And I guess we... I could ask the implementation chair to discuss that at a later date, too. Yeah, it's not agendized, but I'll say fine when, when it is. Okay. <laughs> um, just a point, point of clarification, if I may, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair. <laughs> yes. um, the meetings that we have on page 42. 42 of our packet, at least through 2014, are these the same that we had before? Yes. They are? Yes, the same dates. The dates. Same dates heading into uh, into 2015. Okay. I just oh. wanted to make sure I had these on my calendar at least through 2014. What I what I just realized looking at it, January 15th, 2015. The next one down is January 15th, 2014. That should be 15. Uh, yeah, for 2015, it's the same third Thursday schedule for board meetings. Got um, it. And the implementation board meetings are three public advisory, six governing board at three. Got it. Correct. Do, you, do you need any action, Madam Chair? Oh, I do have a question. I just want to, as long as we're confirming, um, and confirming that all of those 3 o'clock meetings for the governing board are going to be right here. Yes, in this, this is the standard noticed meeting location. and Whatever uh, entrance we use, they're going to be right here. Yes. Got it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would actually, so that we can go on record that we're approving this. Motion to approve. There's no action needed, I don't think. I don't believe there's any action that's needed. Is that correct? I know, but I'd prefer just to. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excuse me, Ms. Okay. Chair. Who second that motion? Thank you. Member Camus. Okay, thank you. Before we, before we move on, uh, just a question from the city attorney. Can we vote to approve the agenda if it's not on our agenda as an action item? You know, um, I think it's fairly innocuous. 
innocuous. You're not probably supposed to, but here you're okay. just saying that you <laughs> agree with what's on there, and that's how I took it. I okay. That's how it was intended. All right. Thank you. It can't hurt. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. On to item future initiated agenda items. Does anyone uh, have anything to oh, add? We're missing one. Did I pass one? Yeah. Oh, I'm five. sorry. <laughs> item five on the agenda. I'm Can't sorry. Have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, the written report clearly did not get get prepared. Just a couple of things uh, to note as executive officer. Uh, one is a, perhaps a little more systematic uh, set of comments on the regional general permit. We talked about that with an earlier agenda item. Um, we've gone through the public notification, the Corps of Engineers has gone through the public notification and review process May 5th to January, to uh, June 5th. Uh, they had one question from the, cent South, from the Central Coast Water Quality Control Board staff. Other than that, no comments. So. You know, nobody jumping up and down and objecting, et cetera. Um, I have to commend ICF for their continued preparation of all of the paperwork. And let me emphasize all of the paperwork. Uh, we are pulling the core through this process. Um, it is getting more complicated because the core staff, we started with two core staff people. Uh, one of them left beginning of the year. The second is leaving at the end of July. So his commitment, and, and again, we had a conference call, coordination call, a regularly scheduled coordination call on Tuesday. His commitment is to leave this process as tightly tied together as possible. His objective is to get this done. It won't be quite done in terms of his last day at the end of July, but, but he's trying to set this up so that it can be easily carried forward. As part of that, as I noted earlier, the, uh, he agreed that we would have a chance to review a draft RGP. I might add that is not the, was not the case with the habitat plan permits from the state and the federal government. Um, they basically said you will get them when you get them in the mail, and we did. <laughs> but there was no chance to review a draft. Um, but the Corps is receptive to that. I would anticipate that the draft, and this is probably not on the schedule because it's post packet, uh, but the draft uh, will be on the August Public Advisory Committee meeting and the September uh, board meetings. And that would be the target right now, which means we still are, I think, are within hailing distance of getting a regional general permit issued by end of September or October. And I will note the, uh, the importance, again, of uh, that use of the permit is linked to the at least start of construction or the issuance of permits for the start of construction of the first wetland uh, restoration or creation project that is summer of 2015 and ICF um, is working on that very diligently. We'll be working with members of the uh, community, other agencies, Open Space Authority, county parks, et cetera, to, to move that project, to move forward at least one wetlands project in the summer of 2015. Um, so that is a, a very high priority. Um, second, um, an observation as, as I leave, which is I think the agency would, be, uh, would benefit from having a personnel committee. You are now going to be undertaking a conventional staff member rather than a contract person. Um, and I think the, uh, my recommendation to, to legal counsel as well as to, to Ed coming in is that uh, to bring forward an idea of a personnel committee, and I think the chairs of both boards, uh, your, your observations and thoughts about this will be appreciated. I think there needs to be, my, my sense is there needs to be a process for evaluation of the executive officer, and that clearly usually is done by a personnel committee. It's usually done in closed session. Um, Right now, we don't have any mechanism to do that. And there may also be issues with other services that the agency is receiving where people wish to talk about a concern, an issue, whatever, but not appropriately, I think, probably not talk about service levels in, in a public discussion. Um, so a personnel committee is, is something that I will recommend be, be followed up on. And just, well, two last comments. One is, uh, I did contract work for Morgan Hill in 2002 and three in very early 2004. I was very impressed at that time with the quality of the public facilities in this city. And just sitting here today and looking at this facility, um, 
my compliments again to Council Member Constantine and to Mayor Tate for the, the quality of public facilities that Morgan Hill provides. I think uh, I was here when the community center opened up uh, and uh, saw a variety of other facilities open up. I did not come to the aquatic center because I wasn't going to start swimming on a Sunday afternoon or whatever it was. But, uh, but again, my compliments to the city for, I think, a job very, very well done. And lastly, since my, I'm, the, I'm almost the ultimate short timer, my contract ends on Monday, uh, the 30th, uh, just to thank you for the opportunity for me to um, spend more years than I ever thought imaginable. Uh, this job was pitched to me in 2004 as three years and probably 20 hours a week. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you told me it was only going to be two meetings a year when I agreed to be on the governing <laughs> board, Mr. Shriver, so. Um, but this has been uh, my personal career uh, will celebrate the 44th anniversary of the start of my first professional job in Rockford, Illinois, um, a few days after July 4th of, of 1974, uh, so I, of 1970, so it's coming up on 44 years, and I can truly say that in those 44 years, this job has been the most challenging but uh, I think also in many ways, certainly one of the most rewarding um, for Council Member Sumidian or <laughs> Supervisor Sumidian standpoint, <laughs> tells you how far back we go. Uh, maybe the Sand Hill Corridor project in Palo Alto will still exceed it in terms of satisfaction, but um, the, uh, the, the level of, of Accomplishment, I think the, the learning opportunity for me, the, the challenges from a management standpoint uh, have been uh, exceeded anything I could have imagined, and, and I thrive on that, and I, I, that, that is very good. So um, again, thank you for, for the opportunity, for, thank you to your predecessors for the opportunity to uh, participate in this process for almost 10 years now. And, um, I, as I've told people, uh, the executive officer will have my phone number and um, email address, but at the same time, I think professionally it's important for me to disappear from, from the scene. I don't want to be the, the uh, executive officer pass clanging around the halls, uh, so you won't see me, um, but uh, trust that, that Ed, if there is a need, I'm, a, I'm just a phone call or an email away. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the board, I'd also like to say thank you for all your years of service. Um, certainly, I've been with you for several years myself. <laughs> but on um, behalf of everyone here, I appreciate all the work. And I know that you're the go-to person. If I have questions, I certainly will be calling you. <laughs> Any other comments on this? Only one for me. I just also wanted to tell you that it was a real privilege and honor to be your first legal counsel, and it was a great amount of fun. Frustrating at times, obviously, because we're a new agency, but a lot of fun, and it was, it was nice getting to know you. And I have to echo everything Ken said about Morgan Hill. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he was my neighbor for 18 years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you also, Vera. Okay, on to future agenda items. So uh, do my colleagues have anything they would like to add to a future agenda? I, I'm, oh, go ahead. No, go, uh, after you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would like to ask that, I, I've been waiting for the Habitat Conservation Authority to be open for business, um, for people coming in, and I mean by people, I mean Joe Public coming in and, and I got to get somebody else, Jim Public, <laughs> to, uh, to come in and say, this is my land and I want to do this and what's the fee and have a streamlined process with Fish and Wildlife and the city or the county and hopefully Army Corps if that, they're involved. And so what I would look for on the future agendas is I would like to have a report back from our executive director that says, in the last quarter, we received four applications, seven applications, process three, two were pending, whatever. And I'd like to, to see a trend. I'd, I'd like to see this venture taking off. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'd like to see the similar report back on what lands are added to the habitat realm, the, the habitat inventory, if you will. I'd like a report back that says we, we added this and it's got serpentine and it's got some frogs and some salamanders. Just, just a little five minute report from the executive director on those two areas showing us that in fact, land is being preserved, which was half the objective, and that applications are being processed more expediently um, and in a responsible manner and mitigated, which was the other half. I'd, I'd like to, some feedback that says we're doing what we intended to do. Sure. We can certainly do that. Let me just make the observation that on individual applications from public sector, private sector, uh, we don't have people walking through the door, which I think is very, very good because if they're walking through our door, they probably are complaining about one of the co-permittees process. And so the effort has been to, to have people work with their planning staff and to have the process work through each of the, the land use approval processes for the, the three cities and the county in terms of private sector. And um, I think one of the, the um, good things from my standpoint is I get very few calls of people saying, I've got, you know, is it true that? Uh, but they're getting good explanations and they're, they're they, they, I'm assuming they, they get good explanations and they're working through the process. Um, so part of the feedback you're asking is really a feedback from the permittees in terms of what level of activity are they seeing, what type of processing, and I think we can pass that along and I think we can try to set up some type of structure for that. But um, you know, one of the big objectives is to keep people from, from coming in the Habitat Plan office and complaining about or the, the process. As far as land acquisition, um, that is, is another topic that, that you will need to get periodic updates on. And that's correct. Well, currently, is it set up from each agency to send a quarterly report to the Habitat Agency? If not, then maybe we can discuss that at our future agenda items and um, requesting that. That would be. No, in, in the sense of a quarterly report, uh, we are very honestly, it's still in the early stages of seeing projects come through and get permits because we had the pipeline, which meant that a lot of pre-habitat plan projects didn't have to deal with the habitat plan. And that ended in July? Um, no, it ended, ended um, in June, I think it was. Anyway, so we're starting to get, see, we're starting to get projects coming through under the habitat plan. Uh, we're setting up literally this week the process of getting money tra f fees transferred from the individual agencies to the habitat agencies. I think that may be probably the best uh, initial summary of how much activity is occurring. But I'll take this up with uh, uh, co-permittees tomorrow morning at our standard Friday morning meeting. Okay. And there are any number of people in the audience who will be at that meeting and they'll remind me if I if it slips from my mind. Any other members have anything? I actually would like to bring up um, something for discussion only amongst ourselves. The idea of a, sort of a, along the same lines as Mr. Shriver said about a personnel uh, committee as a, a finance subcommittee. Um, I'm on the board of directors of another in my own agency and we have a finance subcommittee that overlooks expenditures from time to time and so it's something I'd like to see us discuss and if it's not needed it's not needed but at least we should agendize it to discuss. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. If nothing else I'll ask one more time any member of the public who'd like to speak. If not then we are adjourned to the July 17, 2014 meeting. Thank you. Wait. Adjourned. <laughs> Not fast enough for